I have more fantastic news, Jimmy. Oh yeah? What's that? Because your tank is so successful, you get to start testing your tank more. Testing my tank more. It's funny that you should say that because I knew we were going to film today and I just got out my testers. Look at that organization. Mm. Yeah, so I've got uh, all my Hannah goodies here. But, but wait, wait, wait. Is it so organized because you never use it, so you organize it and put it away? Um, it has been put away for a little while because I ran out of reagent for some of them. Dude, saltwateraquarium.com. We have them in stock. I got it. I got it. So I just have to restock these today. I'm, I have to do that. Does it matter that I failed chemistry in high school? I didn't really fail it. I just didn't go to it. I had a girlfriend, I was 16 or 17, and it was first hour. I did really good in science, so I can do, I can do these testers. Because you need to start testing for alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. Ooh. We'll put up a pretty little preface here. For those of you that are watching, if you just have a fish-only tank, no corals at all, you don't have to worry about testing for alkalinity, calcium, magnesium. Does not affect your lives not gonna affect your tank at all. But this is Jimmy, newbie reefer. Jimmy is a reefer tank with corals. So the other piece I'll say is if you're a soft coral guy or girl, that's what's in your tank, nothing wrong with that. You need to pay attention to alkalinity, not really calcium, not really magnesium. Do you know what alkalinity is, Jimmy? Um, I know what an alkaline battery is. Kind of, sort of, not the same as what's in your fish tank. Okay. The thing about alkalinity is it's not just an element like calcium or magnesium. Those are in the periodic table. Alkalinity is like kind of, it's not really a compound either. It's like a collection of, of things. And one of the things in there is bicarbonate, which corals use to build their stony skeletons, specifically the hard corals. Now, if you're a soft coral person, you might say, well, I don't have any hard corals. This doesn't apply to me. There's some leeway there. If your alkalinity is low, like seven under, your soft corals likely aren't gonna be happy. So this does, does apply to you even if you're a soft coral person. Now, you were saying, well, I know what the reading is in my tester. Yes, here's the catch with this. Just because you get a number doesn't mean that it's the right number. Where do I like to have my alkalinity? Somewhere between seven and really eight at max nine. Some people are what we would call high alkalinity people. They like to keep their alkalinity around 11, 12, even above 10. I haven't had a tank that's been successful yet with that kind of alkalinity reading. So in your tank, Jimmy, I like to see it hover between seven and eight. Okay. You're gonna know where the reading is by testing. And if you really wanna nerd out, Jimmy, here's the fun thing. Your alkalinity will actually swing during the day because during the day when photosynthesis has happened, your corals are growing, it's gonna pull out that carbonate that's in your water column and your alkalinity is actually naturally gonna drop during the day. Then at night, it'll turn around and reverse and go back up because your corals are not growing as fast. They're not sucking it out. They still are a little bit, but not much. So know that it's gonna rise up and down the day. So here's a pro tip. One of the things that I do is when I manually test my alkalinity, and I do it too, is I test it at the same time every day. So don't test it at eight in the morning one day and the next time you test it at eight o'clock or midnight because the number could also change because your alkalinity levels changing because of things going on in your tank, but also it's because of the night and day kind of natural fluctuation. I like to test that twice a week on your tank if you don't have an automated tester. All right. Any questions about that? No questions, but I think I've only tested my alkalinity like four times in eight months. So I'm a little behind the curve. Yeah, yeah, because you want to spot trends in your tank. You can't do that with data points that are like light years away from one another. <sighs> That's alkalinity. Let's talk about calcium. Calcium used by hard corals as well. A little bit with soft corals. Fish don't care about calcium levels. You do need to be concerned about it for things like your clam. You showed us some great growth with your clam, which is awesome. It needs calcium to do that. 
Right now you're getting that done with water changes. We'll talk about that in a second. But you can run a simple calcium test. There you go, there's an IOS test. I like to use that. Hannah makes one as well. Is it bad that I've never opened this box? I thought I was testing for all this stuff. Oh, I have opened it. Maybe I have used this. Okay. Why don't you look at the magnesium box and tell me if you've opened that one? Yeah. Yeah, magnesium. I have this. There you go. Have you opened it? Has it expired because you've left it for so long? It's been opened. Oh, it looks brand new. When we're done, go run your alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium tests. Okay. Magnesium is used by corals, all types of corals. It probably won't fluctuate much. There are people who have never had to supplement their own magnesium levels, but you still need to track it and see what they are. Because if it's not at a good level, then your tank could suffer. And if you're just looking at alkalinity and calcium, you can wonder why. Um, so what do you do if your magnesium isn't where you want it to be? We'll talk about that in a future show. We're going to talk about different ways that you can supplement it. But for now, know that the water changes that you're doing are supplementing your alkalinity, calcium, magnesium levels. We're giving it little bumps because the levels of those elements fall in your tank. And then we do a water change with a high quality salt mix that has the right level. So it's bringing them up. They're not changing much, so we don't have to make much of a change to bring them back where they are. Now in your tank, once it really gets going, corals get much larger, they're uptaking more of those elements, and they're growing a lot faster because there's more of the coral, then it's going to suck it down faster and we have to supplement your tank with alkalinity, calcium, magnesium. Luckily, you're not there yet, but you're not going to know when you need to supplement these things if you don't test and track. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And I haven't been really good about testing, but I am really good about doing water changes. I'm doing a you know, 10, 15 gallons a week. Do you think maybe that's how I've been able to kind of get away with? Yeah, this is kind of a hack with it. Like, look, your coral, corals are not very big. They're not uptaking a lot. You're doing a regular water change. So you're giving it the bump that it needs. It can get you along for quite a long while. People who never have success, they never get to the point where they need to supplement alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, because their corals never grow. They never uptake those elements. But in your case, since they're not using a lot of the elements, then water changes are getting you by. I hear everything you're saying and it all makes sense. And there's a, there's a reason, and I, God, I, I'm a little embarrassed to say it, that I haven't gotten in here and do this. I just kind of find this part of the, the whole hobby just a kind of boring and time consuming and I just don't want to do it. But, uh, you know, I don't mind cleaning it. I see my results here because a lot of the time I don't know what it means. I just ask, ask, and I'm like, okay, it's falling in that number. So I, I'm, I'm starting to learn what magnesium and phosphate and, you know, nitrate, alkalinity, all this stuff. But um, I just don't like getting out these testers and waiting three minutes on this one, seven minutes on this one. How many day, minutes a day, Jimmy, do you spend picking your nose? That's personal. <laughs> the point is, if you don't have 15 minutes out of your week to dedicate to this, fish tanks really aren't your thing. Uh... Now, there are going to be people who are like, I've never tested and I've had some results, right? Like, sure, there's a guy who eats McDonald's every day for years of his life and he's never gained weight. They're called outliers. That's not most people. So, but when you do test, and you do write down the results and then you write down things that you look like tank looking good, tank not looking good. Then you start to see, oh, these were my levels. This is when the tank was looking good. Now the tank isn't looking good. Am I outside my levels? That can be a clue to what's going on. Because I, you're right. I, I should really learn it and understand it. And I'll go the manual way. Some people want to jump right in and, and buy the gear and buy the automatic tester. I don't mention that a lot because I don't want people to feel like I have to have one for my tank to be successful. Can it help? Yes, but there are plenty of tanks that are run without them. I ran my tank without one before they are available and it did fine. So it's great if you want to go that route and you want to jump straight in and do it. I like to learn the basics first and then if you decide you're all in, you want to take it to that level, you can. I don't want people getting caught up thinking they have to have it. 
Alrighty then. <laughs> Got some testing to do. <laughs>